we're going to do an introduction to linked lists, just introduce the topic. And before that, we'll just do a quick recap of reference objects and what they mean. Okay, so here we've got a person class. Um, we can store the name and age for each person that we want to create. And we've got a, a parameterized constructor here that takes in a name and an age and sets the class to other items equal to the ones that are passed in. We've got an accessor method, get name. We've got a mutator method, set name, which changes class data. And, uh, and that's it. Now, there's a lot we could add to this class. It's only a very simple class. We've got no validation occurring at the moment. So the person could be set to a negative age, for example. Uh, we've got no validation on name. Uh, we could also add a get, a, get a, a get age and a set age method in, methods in, a two string method and various other things as well. Okay, so there's lots we could add in, uh, but it's just a start, okay? And it's a sort of class that you've created many times already throughout this term. Okay, so um, very simple little class. So when we declare a person, for example, Frankie, person Frankie equals new person, and we want to call the parameterized constructor, we need to pass through a string and an age. So Frankie, the, the object Frankie will have a name of Frankie and an age of two. Okay, then we can declare another person object, for example, Mike, and set them equal to Frankie or create another person object for Mike. But here I've set Mike equal to Frankie. Okay, so Frankie and Mike are reference objects. They refer to a location in memory which contains a person object. Because we set Mike equal to Frankie, they both refer to the exact same location or object in memory. Okay, and here's an, here's an example of how that might look in memory. So Frankie uh, points to a location in memory that contains the name Frankie and the age too, and that's a person object. Okay, and Mike also refers to that same memory location. If we try and so we can invoke the class methods for those objects now. For example, Frankie.getName, Mike.getName. So I've just put a, a string out there to the screen saying we're using we're invoking the getName method. And we'll see the names for Frankie and Mike. Okay. And then if we do a two string, there's no two string method inside that class we just created. And we haven't got an extends on our class. So we know from prior lectures that the class automatically extends the object class which is Java's parent of all classes. So it will invoke the two string method in the object class because there's none in our person class. So Frankie and Mike are the same as saying Frankie.toString and Mike.toString. Okay, and the object class version of those methods, the two string method will be run. And we'll see the, the data item, the data type, for example, person, and a hash code to do with the memory address of where the person is located in memory. Okay, and there's the output there. So get name outputs Frankie and Frankie because they both refer to the same object in memory, and the name of that, the name of the, the person is Frankie for those for that object. And two string refers returns the, 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 the data type, which is person, and the hash code, which is a memory reference to where the the uh, the class object is in memory. So it's where Frankie is in memory, which is um, that uh, memory location there. Okay, so, and we said Mike, you get or Frankie, so they both refer to the same memory location and the same object. That's why those addresses are coming out the same. If we change the um, the name for one of those objects, for example, Mike.setName, so we're invoking the set name method in our person class and passing in a new name, then we're changing the name of that memory object or that, that, uh, that person object in memory. Okay, so the name will now be Henkel, because we've changed the name to Henkel. Um, so we've, we've changed the name of the person object referred to by Mike, but this, all, this also affects Frankie because they both refer to the exact same object in memory. So uh, Frankie's name will also be Henkel, and Mike's name will be Henkel if we call the get name method. Okay, so it's changed all objects that refer to that memory location. So if we do a, a Frankie.getName and a Mike.getName, we should see we should see Hankel for both, and when we do run the code, that's exactly what we get: Hankel and Hankel. Okay, so um, the name's been changed for that memory location for that for that uh, for that object in memory. And that ref that affects all objects that refer to that location in memory. So the person objects Frankie and Mike both are, are both reference objects. They each contain the memory address of a person class object, and because we set when we, did, we created Mike, we set Mike equal to Frankie, they both refer to the same 
memory location or the same object in memory. Okay, so if we update the data pointed to by one of the objects, we change the data for all the objects pointing to this same memory address or referring to this same object in memory. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's very important what uh, we just covered there. That's a recap on reference objects and how they work in Java. And we're now going to use reference objects to build a dynamic linked or a dynamic list of linked objects in memory, and that's called a linked list. So a dynamic list. In other words, the list can grow or shrink. Uh, without bounds, depending on how much memory we've got available to us, and uh, we can keep adding uh, items onto the list, and that's called a linked list. Okay, so it can grow or shrink according to how much memory we've got available to us, which can be enormous on today's computers. So here's our, our uh, just a, a starting class called, and we've called it list node because each each object of this class is going to store a an item in the list. And each item in the list is going to have a bit of data, which is an integer for this first example. It's just going to be an integer and also a reference to the next node in the list. So each node is going to have a little bit of data, an integer, and also a reference to the next node in the list so that we can use that next node item to jump to the next node and process that next node or look at the next node and then move to the next node after that and so on. Okay, so there's a little constructor here and uh, it's a parameterized constructor we're passing through a, an integer and we're saying uh, the data that uh, we're storing for our class object is equal to the one that's just the bit of data that's just passed in so this dot data equals data and for now we're just setting next node equal to null okay so there's going to be no no next node in the list uh, each 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 node is just going to be a single node uh, just for now just for this example uh, we're going to get data method there, an accessor method that returns the data, the integer that um, was passed through when the uh, the object was created, and also a method that sets, oh, get the next node. So it's going to return what the next node is. Okay, so that's the next node here. So it's going to re return the object reference for the next node in memory, if there is one. Otherwise, it's just going to return null. And we're going to set next node method there. So that, a mutator method that takes in a node, so list node, next node, and we set the, the class data item next node equal to the one that's passed in. So again, there's no validation, just to keep the code as simple as possible. But this is a little class that's going to store an integer and a, 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 a list node object that's going to refer to the next node in the list. So it's just a nice, short, simple little class. Not much more complicated than what we saw for the person class. Okay, uh, but uh, here, we're, here we've got a, a, a thing where the, the class is creating or has an object that refers to itself. Okay, so that we can join objects together. That's what we're trying to do here. So that we can, have, we can create a list of objects uh, that grows and shrinks depending on what we need. Okay, so now we can de declare some list, list nodes. Uh, so list node node one equals new list node, and we're passing through the value 25. List node node two equals new list node 10. List node node three equals new list node seven. So we've created three nodes and they've got the values 25, 10, and 7 stored in them, respectively. So they're the integers that are going to be stored at that location. Okay. And the memory addresses for the next node are going to be null, because that's what this constructor sets. It sets next node equal to null inside the constructor. Okay. So we've got 25 as an integer, and next node is null. And then for node 2, we've got 10 as an integer, and next node is null. And node 3 has got 7 as an integer, and next node is null. Okay. So if we try and print out the data, at each location, and we do that with the get data method call. Uh, so node one dot get data, node two dot get data, node three dot get data. We should see the values 25, 10, and seven on screen. Okay, so that's the data stored on each node, and that's exactly what we see: 25, 10, and seven. Okay, so everything's working just as we expect. Okay, so nothing too fancy so far, but let's move on a little bit. And uh, so let's look at the those nodes, what, are, what do they actually contain? So like, like with the person objects we saw earlier, this is going to call uh, the two-string method. Now there's no two-string method in our list node class, so it's going to, Java's going to automatically invoke the two-string method in the object class, which is going to re return the data type and the memory hash, okay, the location in memory, if you like, okay, for each of those nodes. And there's what we might see. So it's a list node data type, and the, the memory hash or, or the hash code, which is really like a memory location. 
where the uh, where that uh, node one object locate is located in memory. And we've got a different memory location for node two and a different memory location for node three. Okay, so they're all of type list node, but they're all at different locations in memory. Then we can use the set node method. So node one dot set node to node two, and node two dot set node to node three. So node one's next node should now be node two, and node two's next node should now be node three. So this is linking the nodes together so that we can traverse the list and work through the list. Okay, so node one, 25, data's still 25, and it's got a reference to node two. Node two has still got the data, the data value 10, and it's got a reference to node three. And node three we haven't set a next node for, so it's still got the value of null. Okay, and the ampersand there is just a shorthand for hash code. And just think of memory address when you see the, the hash code. And that's the location pointed to by an object. Or op, the, uh, the memory location um, used by an object. Okay, now when we uh, invoke node one dot get next node, so we're invoking the get, node, get next node method for each node. Node one dot get next node, node two dot get next node, and node three dot get next node. Um, so we should now see um, the data types and the hash codes for the next nodes. And that's exactly what we see. So node 1's get next node returns 139A55, which is the, uh, the, 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 the data item, class, the class name, and the memory address for node 2. Okay which is what we set it to, node 1.set next node, node 2. So that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing the, 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 um, the hash code and memory and data type for node 2 as, as our next node, which is exactly what we thought we'd see. And for node 2, we see 1db9742, which is the, the data type list node and the memory hash code for node 3, which is exactly what we thought we'd see again, because we set node 2.set next node to node 3. Okay, so the next nodes for node one is node two, and the next node for node two is node three, and node three is still null. That's basically what it means. Okay. All right, so we can now use the next nodes to start at a particular node in the list and traverse the list and go through the other nodes until we get to, for example, null. Null means the end of the list. So when we get to node three, which has got a null for the next node, we know to stop. So let's do that. So we're declaring a, a, a list node called temp node and setting it equal to node one. So temp node and node one both refer to the same object in memory, which is node one. Okay. Uh, and then we can print out a message saying traversing the list. While temp node is not equal to null, so while we, temp node is not equal to the null memory address, we can um, get the data at the current node. So temp node dot get data, and I'm just outputting a little minus. Uh, minus greater than sign there to show that we're going through the list and once we've done that we can say temp node equals temp node dot get next node so that's setting temp node equal to the next node in the list okay and we'll keep looping while temp node is not equal to null getting the data jumping to the next node in the list getting the data jumping to the next node in the list okay so we're traversing the list and then when we're finished, we can just output done. Okay, and that's what we see on the screen. 25 is the first node, 10 is the second node, 7 is the third node, and then we see done. Okay, so that little loop there is traversing the list. It's going through all the nodes in the list, starting with node 1, because that's what we said temp node equal to originally, and uh, printing out the data at each node and jumping to the next node. Okay, until we get to the null memory address, and then we say done. Which we exit the loop, and we see done on the screen. Okay, so you might be thinking now, well, that's interesting, Mike, but uh, why why bother with this? Well, the, the beauty of linked lists and dynamic structures like linked lists is that they can grow and shrink in memory, okay? And they're very efficient ways to store objects in memory. Okay, so um, you, can use, you can use them a lot and they're used a lot in industry and you can use them a lot in your own work as well. Okay, so if you've got data and you're not sure how big it is, a linked list might be one way to store it. Okay, because it can grow and shrink quite easily. We've got some more examples coming up. 
So storing integers is fine, but what about if we want to store other data types, for example, strings or persons? We certainly don't want to adapt a copy of the list node class for every data type. We don't want to take that code and change int to string throughout that class and save a special list node string version of it and a list node person. That's unnecessary duplica duplication. And if we want to add new functionality into our list node class, we need to remember to copy and paste it into all the list node classes, list node string, list node person, whatever, uh, which is really nasty. So we don't want to do that. We want to have one list node class and be able to have it automatically adapt to our data that we want to store in that list node. Can we do it? Thankfully we can. There's several options, but the best way is to use a generic data type. So in our code, we're going to call that T. And a lot of the textbook examples, you'll see it called T, but we could actually call it anything we want. It doesn't have to be called T. T is just a letter that we've used, but we could call it Fred or my data or my data type or anything else we want, but the example is we can just call it T. Okay. And once we've created a generic data type, uh, Java will automatically substitute the data type we want to use when the codes compile and run. Okay, so that's the beauty of it. We can create the list node class in a generic form that will be able to store any type of data. Okay, and then we can work with any type of data without creating a special custom version of list node for every type of data we want to store, which would be a nightmare, like we just talked about. So let's look at the code, and it's really quite simple. So instead of storing uh, int there, we put t. Instead of, instead of uh, just having list node next node, we, got, we use a less than t greater than notation. Same at the top of our class, it's list node less than t greater than. Um, public, instead of int, we've now t is our data type, get data. Uh, for get next node, we're, retur we're returning a list node less than t object, greater than sign. And set next node, we're taking in a generic list node, which is list node less than t greater than next node. Okay, so we've just gone through and changed int to, to t throughout our class. And we've put a list node less than t, t greater than there to make it a generic list node object or list node class. And we've gone through and changed all our list node references to list node uh, t here and here. Okay, so wherever list nodes refer to, and there, of course, um, we've uh, now got list node, the generic version of list node, which is list node t. Okay, so we've just made that little change. That's all we needed to do. And now we can use that list node class to store integers, strings, or any other data type we want. That's all we needed to do. It's that simple. Okay, Java's made it very easy for us. So let's let's now see that class in action. Let's store integers. So list node integer, node one equals new list node integer, 25. Node two, 10. Node three, seven. And all our other codes are the same. Nothing's changed. The only other change we need to make is we need to make sure temp node is defined to be of type integer as well. So this is, this is saying that we've, we're creating list node objects and we're storing integers as a data type for each location. Okay, so that's all we had to do was put integer there, and none of our other none of our other code changes. We're traversing the list doesn't change. Okay, and when we traverse the list, uh, we see the 25, 10, and 7 as before. And when we output the get when we call the get data method here, we see 25, 10, and 7 as we did before. So nothing else needed to change. All we had to do was tell Java what type of data we wanted to store at each node, and it was an integer in this case. So we've made our, our list node class generic. It works with any type of data. Let's see work with strings. List node string, node one. List node string, node two. List node string, node three. And we're going to store Mike, Frankie, and Hankel at each of the nodes. And the only other change we need to make is that list node temp node is also defined to be of type string, storing a string data at each node. Okay, so that we can use that to traverse the list. And that's the only change we needed to make. Everything else stays the same. So there's Mike, Frankie, and Hankel stored at each location. Um, and we're seeing that with a get data method call there. And then we're traversing the list, Mike, Frankie, and Hankel, and we're done. Okay, we could create more nodes, node four, node five, nine, node six, join them all together with node three, dot set next node, uh, you know, node four and so on, and, uh, and then traverse the list. <clears throat> and uh, really quite easy. Okay. 
let's store a person at each node in the list. So this is, this is using the person class that we introduced back on slide two. So we're just using that class we've already looked at. List node person, node one equals new list node person. So we're telling Java we want to store a person at each load, at each node in the list. Equals new, uh, round brackets, new person Mike, 99, Frankie, 2, Hankel, 3. So we're calling the person class constructor here. So we're storing a person object at each node on the list. So we're just invoking the person constructor. Person parameterized constructor. And then we have, so we just put person there for each node object and person there. And for our list node, temp node, we've got to put the person in as well to make sure that we're referring to um, person nodes when we use temp node. Okay. Nodes containing person data, in other words. Okay, and that's all we needed to change. Everything else stays the same. So we've stored a, stored a person at each node and we're traversing the nodes down here through um, uh, each, each, each node in the list. And the only other change we had to do was get data would just refer, bring back a person object as we'll see here with these get datas, it just brings back a person object. <coughs> to get the name associated with that person object, we need to invoke the get name method from our person class. Okay, so there's our person objects. Node one, node two, node three, node one, node two, node three, and there's traversing our list. Frankie, Mike, Hangel, because we're calling the get name for each person object as we go through the list. Okay. And um, you might remember that 19EOBFD uh, memory address. That was one of the addresses we looked at with Frankie and Mike early on in the lecture. So that same address has popped up again as a person object. So what's next? We've got a generic list node class that can store any type of data. What we should do now is create a generic linked list class. Okay, so the linked list class will have generic functionality to traverse the list, create Add, create or add nodes to the start, end, or anywhere else in the list. Remove nodes from the start, end, or anywhere else in the list. Sort the list. Save or load the list to or from file. Um, we could also extend our list node class to store the prior node for each node so that we can traverse the list both ways, forwards and backwards, in which case we'd have a doubly linked list. Okay, so that's, we've got a, at the moment we've got a, with our examples, we've got a singly list, list, linked list we could create a doubly linked list by just storing the prior node as well and adding the methods in to set that node. For example, set prior node, get prior node, and methods like that. Um, so anything else we like. And um, so for further information on that, see this week's lecture slides. We, we make a start on adding some of these things to our, our linked list class. We, we start creating a linked list class and start adding some of this functionality. Okay. Okay, so in conclusion, as with everything, everything we cover, these topics will seem complex until you get experience using them in your own work. So the, the trick is to get lots of practice. Uh, apply these topics to your own work and they'll become uh, much easier very quickly. Practice and, and, and improve your understanding by writing lots of code to solve a wide range of problems every week. So do it regularly, not just at assignment time, for example. Um, you know, the first time you tackle these sorts of problems it shouldn't be when you come to do your assignment, it should be well practiced by then for each topic. Uh, background reading, there's textbook, there's the internet, there's uh, lots of resources on the internet you can use. Um, there's tutorial questions, uh, there's the end of chapter questions in a textbook. Um, and if you need more questions, just contact the course coordinator um, and contact the course coordinator if you need help as well. And if you need help, uh, you can also use the course forums, although be careful of posting anything assignment related to the course forums. You can ask for help on the assignments on the course forums just generally, but you can't provide any code or any answers that might be used uh, or accessible by other students. Uh, okay, so just make sure you keep that clear when you use the course forums. It's always safer to just email the course coordinator if you need help with your assignment. Okay, I hope that helps um, and uh, thanks for watching.